So you will all have a prompt letting you know that I'm recording. And say God, you say it's okay. Or leave Got it. Meeting. Got it. I'm leaving. <laughs> oh, you're leaving? I'm not going to want to be recorded. Sorry. Oh, I like it. <laughs> it's too late. We just caught you. <laughs> well, everybody, thank you for um, coming together for this meeting. And I apologize that we couldn't have it here, but not only does my husband have COVID, but I tested today positive. Mm -hmm. So we both have it, but I'm fine. I'm totally fine. I don't have it like he does. But um, so that's so unfortunate, but that's like the times these days. And aren't we lucky that we can still get together and sort of disseminate all this information and get to know you anyway? Um, I'm, I This is an amazing workshop. Uh, the first time I went was in 2018 when I taught um, with Isabel in Scopolo and Tom in Scopolos. And um, I had heard about it from a friend and I knew it was wonderful, but I had no idea at the scope of the programming that's provided. And you'll learn more about that tonight. And um, this is a workshop that, Mer that Merrill is scheduled for and has been since before COVID. And she designed the initial whole scope of it and then invited me to join her. And like, how could I say no? I mean, this is like a great opportunity. So I thank Meryl for that. And I'm going to be um, extending a lot of what she's doing with the techniques that I can share and, and teach and things like that. And we'll get into that later. So what I think I'll do now is um, pass it over to Meryl. She's going to sort of go over the lay of the meeting, you know, the agenda and the uh, what to expect and um we'll take it from there oh yes i'll let her explain it all so hi everyone welcome and i i i can't believe i am so lucky that jody said yes <laughs> so i'm thrilled that jody's coming along we've never actually had the opportunity to teach together before and we are just so excited both about the the um how exciting it's going to be to bounce off of each other and share this but also just the, the experience itself so um what i in terms of tonight what we're going to do is start out with just a few bits of protocol and the first is that if you are not speaking it would be nice if you muted yourself so that we don't get a lot of background noises that make it hard to hear whoever is speaking. Um, and we're going to start with Isabel talking and Tom talking about Greece and showing a set of slides. And we'll hold questions until the end of those slides. And then you'll ask them by raising your hand or waving your hand and we'll call on you. But we'll ask them, we're a small enough group that we can ask them outside of the chat and actually in the room. If you would like to put in the chat your name and where you are signing in from, that's always helpful for other people in the room to see um, where everybody's coming from. So please feel free to do put that in the chat. Um, but the questions will wait until the end of Isabel's presentation. Then Jody's going to do a little bit of a presentation um, with some samples of what she does and how they link to the curriculum and examples from her previous trip to Greece. And then I'm going to do a few um, a few samples. And then we're going to end with I'm going to go through sort of what's in my travel art kit. And that is a little bit, um, you should follow the materials list that's you're going to be provided, but my art kit is just a, a few little tips and hints about what you, what kind of kit you might want to put together for traveling. Um, any questions that were, that um, come up during um, Jody's or my presentations, we will hold till both Jody and I have shown our slides. So the first chance for questions will be after Isabel, and the second chance for questions will be after both Jody and I have shared our slides. Um, and we both, Jody and I, I think I'm right in saying this, Jody, that we're both open to email questions or any other anything else in, as a follow up. But just in terms of tonight, we're going to we're going to try to do slides and then questions. So yeah, Isabel, contact, contact us anytime with anything. Right. Yeah. So. So Jody pro might probably knows more about Isabel and Tom than I do because she's actually worked with them. But I can tell you from my experience, just from um, from from working with them to plan this workshop and to get it set up and to do all of the marketing materials and to talk about um, possible students and so forth, that they're lovely. They're absolutely lovely to work with. Mm -hmm. What I'm really excited about 
is I'm one of those people who wants to completely soak an experience. And Isabel knows so much about the Greek culture um, and has told me some of her, her bio of, of how long she's been there and, and the fact that she did Greek dancing for a long time. There's all, there are all kinds of ways that Isabel is gonna bring all kinds of um, cultural programming to the fore. And that's gonna enhance our experience of where we are and really make us understand Greek culture. Um, so with, with no more further ado or whatever, Isabel, I'm gonna hand it over to you because because you, um, you, you can, you can, you know, introduce yourself, and as well. And would you like me to start sharing my screen now with your slides, or do you want a couple of minutes to talk first? Um, I hadn't actually thought about what I was going to say <laughs> because I thought that the most important things would be what you have to say, you and Jody, and also uh, we are here to answer any questions. But we could just start with the slides, which. Um, I don't want to talk a lot about them. They're really basically there to enhance, uh, to entice you <laughs> on a cold December night, dark and dreary, and to see um, the Acropolis, for instance. So uh, these slides uh, more or less represent the, the itinerary of the program. And this will give you an idea of what happens when we first meet in Athens. Um, we'll meet in the evening around six o'clock, get to know each other, go to dinner, and then the next morning uh, we'll go visit, we'll spend that day at the, uh, visiting all the really important sites in Athens, starting with the Acropolis. Uh, let's keep going next. Um, I'll give you, you could just keep going and I'll tell you when to stop, that would be better. Okay, let's stop for a sec. I'll give you a tour of the Acropolis, give you background information on the history, the mythology. If we're really lucky, we may see some Evzon soldiers dressed in their traditional costumes. On holidays, they bring the flag up to the Acropolis. Let's keep going now. And uh, we'll walk through the various temples and down through the slopes to the theater of Dionysos, where uh, I can give you background on that theater. And then we go to the Acropolis Museum, which is just one of the most spectacular small museums holding only works from the Acropolis. And they're really fantastic. So we can keep going with this and this. <laughs> so these are the things you'll see. Of course, you'll get to see the Caryatids up close. And then we have a break and in the afternoon, we visit the ancient Agora. The ancient Agora was the hub center of ancient Athens. It was the center of the political, the administrative and the commercial life of the city. It's a fascinating place and it's beautiful now, like a park really with the most preserved, beautifully preserved Greek temples in the world. And there's a nice small museum that holds primarily artifacts uh, from the runnings of Greek, ancient Greek democracy. So we'll see the museum and then we go out to dinner at some wonderful hey, there's taverna. Joey. There's yeah. hosting mm. and uh, our hotel has the best location in all of Athens. We're right at the foot of the Acropolis. Here's the roof terrace of the hotel. And now they have a restaurant on the hotel too, on top of the roof. So this is really wonderful. It makes it very easy if we're tired to meet uh, there. And then we, the very next morning, we go to, <clears throat> here's a view of the village from the mountains opposite the village. And we can keep going to the next. It's spectacular, isn't it? It's beautiful. Next, it's... next, okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, and this is the port of Skopelos, and there, you still see old fishing kaikis, they're called. The port's lined with cafes and tavernas and bars. It's really beautiful. And this is part of the accommodations we'll be staying in. We'll be staying in two different accommodations side by side, very close to one another. Um, we can keep going next. And they are right by the sea. So almost all the rooms have either full sea view or partial sea view. This is a typical 
basic double room, just to give you a sense. But you have links on the website. Here's a terrace from one of those rooms. Um, the views are really beautiful. If you look on the website, you can have links to the hotels to get a very better, a good idea of the accommodations. And here's the pool to one of those accommodations, which is right near our workspace. Next. And then the village. Skopelos village is um, an official national treasure of Greece. It's a traditional village. They haven't ruined it. You walk through the village and you feel like you're stepping back in time, a hundred years. This is the signature church of Skopelos. And we walk up this area called, we call it the church walk from one up the cliff from one church to another. Next. Let's go to the next slide. And you'll see from the very bottom, these churches go up the steps next. Spectacular views from everywhere. Our plein air painters like to paint there. We bring them there. And up to the very top, which is uh, actually a taverna called Anatoly, where there's live music. And it's one of uh, Jody's group's favorite places to eat. It's really <laughs> mad place. So, more of the village, the, 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 church, the village has 350 churches. No, the island, the village has 150 churches on the whole island, there's 150. But so, what? I said, but who's counting? Right, we're not counting. <laughs> Every, while, we, while we're sitting here talking, another church is being built. Um, let's go to the next slide. Uh, the interior of Skopelos is absolutely beautiful, filled with pine trees, uh, cult wild pine forests, cultivated olives, cultivated plum trees, uh, and the beaches are beautiful as well. Um, these are two of the nearest beaches. The seas are really wonderfully warm in September too, by the way. We have painters coming. She's in a really dangerous spot there. Wow, look at that water. Clear waters. Yeah. This is, and we we're spend- We're all eating. We're all eating, yeah. <laughs> uh, we, group dinners are part of the fun. They're not, um, they're all optional, but we really have a good time together. Like every so, night is a different taverna of someone you know, right, Isabel? Well, yeah, we know all the taverna owners, yeah. We'll introduce you to our friends. Uh, you'll get to know people. You'll get to know the village. I give a tour of the village. And here's uh, people working. This is one of Adria's courses. Alexandra Sheldon's collage course. This is our old workspace, which is a little different from the newer workspace, which is configured quite differently, but still the same area and a good place to work. This is a big group project that Adria did the first time she taught with us. I don't know if you're all familiar with Adria Arch. And here's uh, photos from Jody's program, which was really one of the best programs we've ever worked on. Um, go to the next. Hmm. That should probably be vertical, but there's Jody doing her magical stuff with all these <laughs> dyes and they're really wonderful. And this is student, the, the work that student was, students were doing then. Produced. I mean, uh, Jody, don't you, they had a wonderful time. Oh, it was like alchemy every day. It was wonderful. Yeah. So this is the area where you'll be um working and uh this is the new workspace it's a little different it's smaller but there are other parts of it uh there's a lower level so i think uh ultimately it works quite well and there's another part of it where students are working And if, it, if the weather's really bad, we take you to our own studio where we have room for to accommodate plenty of um, artists and 
protected from the rain because our other workspace is outdoors. It's wonderful. So here I tried to give you um, a real sense of Greek culture and then I do several cultural presentations. And here's some fascinated people listening. <laughs> to you who are behind. Yeah, the and then, right. And then uh, we have you up to our house and talk about Greek music and Greek uh, dancing and teach you some Greek dances if you want to learn. And we also, this is sort of, cut, a lot of people are, yeah. We try, this was particularly wonderful for Jody's program because my friend Katerina came, she's in charge of the traditional costumes on Skopelos. And she dressed this beautiful young student, Meryl, in the traditional costume of Skopelos and told us how it's worn and the various symbolic elements that are a part of this costume. Uh, oh. And we'll do that again. And then we also visit some local craftsmen. This is, um, the potter Rodios, who's, it's been a family tradition. He he threw a pot magically while we were interviewing him and wound up with this beautifully graceful shape. Uh, so another thing we do is to take you on some excursions and all these things are optional. This is um, the Church of Agios Yanis. It was the, uh, the setting for the uh, Sophie's wedding scene in the film Mamma Mia, which was filmed, a great deal of it was filmed on Skopelos. It's a fantastic place. Students paint there, they sketch, and of course you can climb up to the top. <clears throat> There's Fifi. Yeah, and then we <laughs> always wind up in, a taverna, having drinking and eating and generally having a good time. Uh, and this is, I think, a series of student work. So we can just different things that students have done on various programs. We've been running programs for 30 years now, practically, mm -hmm. just about. And there's just a, so that's it. Yeah, I think that's it. All right. Wow, that, that really gives you a flavor of just how spectacular and luxurious and exotic it is there. That's, so do we, have, do we have questions for Isabel? You can um, either use raising your hand or you can mute yourself. Lisa? Yeah, hi, thank hi. you. That, that looked amazing. <laughs> um, I'm wondering the optional excursions, are they an additional price or? No, they... everything's included. Okay. All that's included, but you, nobody has to feel obligated to come. It's like the things we offer are optional in that if you wanna do something on your own at, during that time, that's fine. That's all, but yeah, like we go out to dinner that's, every night. That's but, all. but I mean, some people don't want to have too much organization. They'd rather be maybe a little more independent. That's fine too. Like we offer it, and if you're up for it, that's great. And if you're not, that's okay. So um, that's what optional means. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And my understanding is that. Um, those instruction every morning and then a break for lunch and you can continue to work in the studio in the afternoon um, but there may not be it may not be as heavily instructional in the afternoon um, so you do have the option of taking off afternoons off occasionally and if you need a break and um, going off on a jaunt or whatever a lot I mean, of people catch a taxi to the beach yeah I mean people great. People want time to enjoy the island. And that's why we've always structured classes in the morning. And then people can continue to work independently if they choose to, or they can take that time to explore, discover the island or relax and swim. You know, 
there's so many different things you can do just exploring the village or renting a car and driving around the island. So I think it's important for people to have that free time if they choose to use it in different ways. And sometimes you just want to stitch by the pool. I mean, yeah. there were evenings where several of us would just sit around the pool and do our own work and chat and and because and maybe skip the dinner because we were so tired from uh, and, and we stay with each other that way. So you can do whatever you want. Opal? Yeah. Can you can you maybe talk about what spouses who are not taking the class may have done in the past? Yeah, uh, depending on what they're interested in. If uh, if they're interested in hiking, they're a fan, it's a fantastic place to hike Scopolos. They can hike up to monasteries or there are a number of different places they can go. Uh, you can go swimming. The sea is right in front of the rooms. But uh, if um, your husband, for instance, would want to rent a car or he could take a bus or a taxi, he could go swimming in the morning. Um, he can sit in a cafe. He can explore the village, which is just a maze of fascinating streets. He can um, he can rent a bicycle if he likes to bicycle. Uh, there's really a broad. I'm trying to think of other things that it was a lot of hiking and bicycling, and um, sometimes they would rent cars. You know, like especially if. You have some time and you want to just go off somewhere for a few hours It's and you want to hire a car for a certain period of time. It's very easy to rent a car. I can give you recommendations on where to go. So th Thanks. there's a lot. There's a lot to do. Susan, no. did you have a question? I love raising my hand. Um, yeah, my question is, so if my husband comes, he's going to want to just swim, 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 swim. There's not like sharks or anything sharp or anything that's going to hurt him, right? Sharks? Did no. you say sharp? Something sharp or no. shark? Oh, I said both. Actually, I said sharks and sharp. No, <laughs> there's nothing that could hurt him unless he's really unlucky and have. Oh yeah, there's a possibility. Like every once in a while, there can be jellyfish, and mm. usually they come and go, and it's impossible to predict if there may be some jellyfish in the area when you happen to be there. But generally, the seas are really, really safe. There are no sharks in that part of the Aegean anywhere near the shore. I mean, it's just never happened. There's never been a shark near Scopolos. In fact, that part of the Aegean doesn't have sharks generally. Joan, you're muted. Oh, you're muted still. Can you hear me now? There yes. you go. Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry about that. Hi. Hi. Um, so what time frame are we talking about? Um, a week, 10 days, two weeks? What, what, how long is what we're talking about? From the 1st to the 14th. So um, I, I can send all of you an itinerary. I have one printed. If I get, I'll get your emails from uh, Jody and Meryl. Um, we spend the first night in Athens, the second day in Athens, the third day we travel to Skopelos, and then you're working for full eight to nine days, depending on whether you vote for a day off or not. And uh, all together, you arrive on the first and you depart on the 14th. So it's basically 13 days, okay. full days for the whole program. Okay. That includes a ton of sightseeing, too. I mean, and all the cultural programming. It's really well designed. I'm sorry, Laura? Laura, you're muted, Laura. I know. Oh, um, okay. I unmuted myself. I, I, I'm a te former teacher and now retired. Woohoo! Um, <laughs> and um, I love the idea of going to Greece, to Skopos. And here's my question. I'm not sure which program to pick. My goal is to do painting and drawing and watercoloring as much as possible. And uh, 
you know, I realize there's some collaging and printmaking. So could you describe, you know, like what the focus is of this trip and Isabel and Tom, maybe tell me if another trip would be a better match to what I'm looking to do. Well, Meryl and I, the next section of this program are going to go into detail a little bit about what our curriculum covers. And then after that, we can, if you can decide if you want to just uh, ask Isabel about other programs as well. Yeah, so why don't we go ahead and do that. Is there anyone else with any questions? I thought I saw more hands. Oh, oh, Red, oh. Ellen. All right. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, you're muted. You're muted again. Okay. Food, other than, I know we, people go out to dinner, but yeah. are there places in our rooms to cook or places to go? I mean, how do people handle that? Um, all the rooms have a certain amount of uh, cooking facilities. They have little kitchenettes yeah. um, where at least you have, uh, some of them have actual stoves or little um, two burner stove mm -hmm. So you can, they also have electric kettles. You can boil Perfect. water. You can make easily, they're all equipped with all with plates, cups, forks, yep. knives. So um, you can easily make simple meals, mm -hmm. not a lot of cooking. Yeah. It, it, um, we would have parties where we would get all sort of hors d'oeuvre things and keep it in our kitchenettes and mm -hmm. then eat on patios and then just have like little charcuteries at okay. night and okay. we so get all of our breakfast food. food. Yeah. There's places to buy. Great. Oh yeah. Okay. There's a superette and we'd get, oh, amazing yeah. Greek yogurt, <laughs> local honey, all okay. of that to keep yep. in your room, you know, things for uh, bread and you know, I'm a big PB and J person, so I always have that with me. And then, yep. so you have you don't have to really ever go out to a restaurant if you don't want to. Oh no, I want to, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, coffee, I have, coffee in the morning <laughs> to start. Most people make their own breakfast, yep. which is very easy to do. It's equipped yep. for that. Many people make their own lunches. You know, it's simple sandwiches. Yeah. You have a refrigerator. Okay. Um, so yeah, there's simple cooking facilities. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. So any more questions before, oh, I see Adam. Yeah, to uh, follow up on my wife's question, uh, real briefly, what's within say half an hour walk of where we're staying? A half an hour walk, we flat or uphill? I eat, well, so it's like, is, are we within a half an hour of a town, a cafe, things oh, like that? You're, you're within eight minutes of the port which is the village, and the village starts there. Eight so minute walk? Really easy walk. Oh, yeah. Eight no, minute walk. Okay, that's, yeah. that's good enough, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Anyone else? We have more questions? All right, Jody, why don't we have you? Oh no, why don't you start? Because I, this is your thesis, This the, the senses <laughs> and all of this. And then I will show where I fit in. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so um, as Jody's mentioned, I'm totally into this sensory experience and really experiencing travel and being present in the now in what is happening around us. So I'm going to share my screen. Whoops, wrong one. Why does it keep doing that? Okay. When you share, uh, never mind. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so we're talking about seeing senses and stories. Mm. And when when I go somewhere, I look around where I am, and I tend to to draw what is happening around me or make collages. And on the left, you see a piece that I did at Catoctin Mountain in Maryland, um, which is a big national park where I was in residence for a couple of weeks. And on the right, you see um, painting, stenciling and collage from um, Acadia in Maine when I was in, in residence in Maine for two weeks. 
So this idea that when we are somewhere, um, we take photographs of it, that's not exactly how I work. I really wanna be down in, in into the flora or looking off across a, a forest and really thinking about where I am. Sometimes I work um, paying attention very small, you know, really to a, to a small element and trying to really observe that small element. And so here we have, um, different flora that I've seen in different places. The one on the right actually was done this summer at um, Snow Farm, for those of you who go to Snow Farm. Sometimes I, I'm also doing self-reflection as I travel, and it's what I'm seeing now is bringing up memories of, of things I've seen in the past. And so there, and sometimes I use flora as a symbol for stories that I'm telling. So the one on the left is really uh, a symbolic flora. And then sometimes I do abstraction. So on the right, you can see a little sketchbook here that was just um, recording the experience through abstraction. Hmm. This is just an example from this summer in Maine. I have friends who um, got this little cottage in Maine. And so um, I, I went up in Maine and you can see, you know, there's, I'm just sketching what I'm seeing in front of me. And then um, we're using, uh, we, and this, what you'll see here, the washes of color are made from flora that were collected on site. So um, you'll see when Jody shows her slides that we're going to do things with flora as a way of printing um, and whatever leftover flora material, we will boil it down until we have an ink that's come specifically from where we are. On the right, I'm just showing you a little bit of um, what I hope to be doing is teaching you 15 minute landscape sketching. So this um, that's an example of just some ways of thinking out your landscape. And then, then here's a landscape. And again, this is um, ink that was done with flora right on site. One of the things I really love to do is just collect wherever I go. I collect, I collect, you know, tickets and, you know, brochures and postcards or whatever, but I also do collect a lot of nature. And here we have um, two bits of nature that, you know, I really studied and uh, I drew them in pencil, but I also then interpret them in stitch. So the, the shell on the left is an interpreted in stitch. What I'm also, what I'm really hoping on this trip is that we're using all our senses. And this is an example of a, of an exercise that's done by listening. So you sit somewhere for 15 minutes and you just write down every sound that you hear. And then what we're going to do some, um, you know, uh, some work around is when you use text in your work, how do you think about the font and the color and the way that it's um, that the text is communicated? Mm. Well, this is the printing technique we're going to use. It's very small. Um, it's a, a, a small little jelly plate that we're going to, we can use local flora, but we can also make our own stencils or our own patterns um, and be thinking about what colors are we seeing around us? What patterns do we see in the Greek culture that we might wanna uh, play around with or record, document? Um, one of the things that Jody and I have talked about too is I'm really focusing on this, this documenting our, uh, your experience. And what my hope would be is that five years from now, when you open up this journal that you've done in Greece, that sense and visuals and words just bring you right back to that experience of being on Scopolos. Um, but journals tend to stay closed until you open them. And so one of the other things Jody and I are gonna do is actually an accordion book, because I also want you to have a way that you've recorded your experience that can stand up on a table so you can share it with your friends or family or whatever. And so this is an example of an accordion book. So this is the size of, um, of this uh, travel journal, this senses and sights and scenes travel journal, where we're gonna st we'll be sticking everything as we collect it into this journal. And we'll also be making art in this journal. And it's completely okay for you to actually, I always bring um, like a watercolor pad. You know, I, it's perfectly okay for you to do work outside this journal. Um, but I'm, when you're, we're walking around, we're gonna be using this journal. And we're going to be using okay, this journal thanks. a lot right. in in the classroom, um, so we're going to be working fairly small. But you are, you know, for those the um, when uh, when we, when you were asked about the about painting, yes, you can paint. If you don't particularly care, uh, let me just stop for a minute and say, all levels of experience are welcome. That's really important to me that no matter what your level of experience is about you you know about communicating visually, that you feel welcome in this room. This is gonna be a, a safe place for you to, to experiment and try your hand at expressing yourself visually. If you're very advanced as an artist, 
you are also welcome in this room because I'm a big believer in sharing wisdom among each other. So it's not just about Jody and I handing down information, but that you'll learn from each other as well. But so we're all going to have this book. This is the one commonality we'll have. We'll all have a, a book. And, and then I wanted to just go through, I myself um, keep a travel kit, you know, uh, assembled all the time. So that when, um, when I'm going to go away for the weekend or something, I, it's already all in there and I can just throw it in, throw it in with my pack. So here's, is an example of what I would expect that you would bring in terms of tools. So this is my pencil or tool case. And you can see, I like a mechanical pencil and leads and erasers. I usually bring um, either stamps or teeny tiny um, uh, letter stencils, or you could bring a bigger letter stencil so that I, if I want to bring text into, into something to tell the story with actual words, I, I can sometimes write and sometimes I use a stencil and multiple scissors and a, and a cutting knife and, and, and uh, brushes of different kinds, which I elastic to cardboard just to keep their, their bristles from bending. It would be great if you bring a brayer, there'll be some brayers to share, but we could never have enough brayers. Um, so a brayer for when we're doing our, our printing and um, different kinds of glues. And then you can see on the right here is my sewing kit. So you know, needles and I, that's a little, yellow bag for my thimble because I use a thimble. I had I find it hard to get, get out the door without a little bag of paper snippets, a little bag of uh, cloth snippets, and a bag of threads. Um, so that's those are my I just throw those in there nice and soft and Ziploc bag they pack and go anywhere. This is your jelly plate on the bottom left. It's pretty small but that's your jelly plate. That's exactly what it'll look like when you buy it. Um, my watercolors are just in tubes. I'm happy to share them. You can bring the kind that are little pots, um, but you might want to bring a little plastic container for water because when you're off traveling around, you might want to have water um, and, as a way to, to um, add to your, to your drawing. And you can see here that there are watercolor pencils. I don't use them a huge amount, but they're, they're fun. So I always have them in there. And then regular pencils for me. And I, I all the stubs of my colored pencils I keep because those become my travel pencils just because they're a little bit smaller. But however you want to have pencils, make sure you have a sharpener. And then my, this is a piece of my watercolor pad that's underneath here. That's my extra. And I pack all of this into a bag. As you can see, it all fits in there nicely with a wide shoulder strap. And I'm saying that because you're probably going to be, we're going to be sending you out to collect things and we're going to be sending you out to do sketching. And so make sure you're, it's very um, easy for you to, to wear your kit. So that is mine. And then Jody, do you want to share yours? Sure. Um, so I am extending Merrill's thesis here in terms of sensing all that's around us in Greece. And this is an image from our, uh, the, the, the last workshop I did in 2018, we used a lot of local flora in this particular workshop, we dyed and printed and, but we will be using local flora to do, to create hapazomes. Hapazomes are when you can hammer the pigment from flowers into fabric or paper. And this way it's a, uh, it's a form of documenting place of where you are. And this could be done separately uh, and you can keep them as little tidbits of information that you can add to your journal later, the, the accordion journal we're talking about. Um, another activity we're going to be doing is um, a practice of mine when I travel is to make a weaving of wherever I am. And I have s many of these and some of them are framed in shadow box frames. Um, this one happens to be um, of Falmouth um, in probably about five years ago. I have them from Thailand and um, out west and a lot of different places. And I see, you can see the vegetation in there and it's dried. And when I see this, I think of that day in Falmouth when I made it. Now this is probably about two by four inches. And um, it's, you know, um, has some depth to it. But the beauty of those accordion books is anything you create, um, you can, we can add to one of those panels if you want it to be part of the bigger ensemble of your sculpture. 
See, what I'm doing, um, here's another one from the last workshop. What I'm doing is I am augmenting what Merrill is doing with words and watercolor and sketching and ink making um, and collage and printing with sort of three-dimensional techniques um, and that you could learn and, and capture place and then add it to your um, work as well. Here's some more of an example of what the hapizome starts out like, vegetation on a fabric, and we, all it is is a hammer. It's like the simplest, most satisfying activity you will do ever. <laughs> um, we'll also get into, I mean, since both Meryl and I are all about the stitch, um, maybe stitching some vegetation that we have around us. I will be bringing um, a, a substance that will, we will soak leaves and grasses and anything else that we can think of. Um, of course, I'm forgetting the name of it right now. It's over there, I think. But anyway, we'll soak it for a few days. And what it does is it makes it rubbery and malleable so that we can treat it and work with it as if it's a piece of fabric and we can stitch it. And then this also, you can get very intricate and you could also applique these onto paper if that is something you want to add to your um, journals. Another example of working with place, this is cordage created from seaweed. And um, I'm not sure, I don't remember finding seaweed the last time I was there, but I do remember many other um, grass-like and plant-like samples that we can make cordage from. And it's a um, very satisfying, um, fun uh, activity to learn about. And then you could couch this onto fabric or just keep it for a um, you know, souvenir. Here I found some shells and made a necklace for myself. There it is, close up. And then I'm also going to work with you if you're interested and um, yeah, I did talk about you at lunch, right? <laughs> <laughs> if we're in, if you're interested in um, embroidering your narratives and your words onto your journals or other pieces that you're working on, I can give you a tutorial on that, um, and it can be done in you know many different applications. So I think I've probably given you the idea of the. Um, the approaches that I will be taking versus what Meryl will be taking, but we both have the same goal of capturing place. And um, we didn't go over too much of the curriculum, but every day we have certain activities planned and not always will we be in the studio. Sometimes you, like Meryl said, we'll be sending you out to go sit somewhere and listen to sounds or observe color or pick something, plants or, or trash up off the ground and we'll figure out why that's meaningful and what we can do with it. A lot of what I will be doing with you, um, in addition to working with what Meryl's doing with you, is um, um, stuff that we find in place so it's not necessarily something I can predict what you bring. The tools Meryl's outlining is perfect for anything we will be doing together. But what, what the materials mostly that I will be working with with you are things we find. And then we'll go from there. What I love about this, Jody, is it extends the experience of the body. You know, we can, we can use the eyes and we can draw and we can paint and we can make ink and so forth. But to actually pick up leaves and stitch them together and so forth, it's like it extends the experience of the Absolutely. body. Yes, that's a good way of putting it. Yeah, which is what sense our senses are. One of our senses is touch. Well, it's that so, tactility, you know, right. of what fiber art really is about right. anyway, yeah. So I'm going to be trying Jody's activities <laughs> and Jody will try my activities 
Um, and, you know, a, a, you know, as uh, Isabel talks about some of the cultural programming, certainly if you really object to certain activities, you know, they're also optional. Um, I will be asking, asking you to do writing exercises. I'm not a writer, but I do, I do them because I just find them, um, they really, um, they, they are a source of discovery. So um, that I'd love for you to, to try going on that journey in the same way that I would love you to try going on the journey of of, um, of Jody's uh, little weavings and so forth. So that would be our hope is that you would try new things and see what you discover. Um, and you just never, you just never know, you know, uh, how expressive you may, may find uh, what a great experience you might have by trying something new. Well, for so instance, either, um, we'll go to the local superette and and um, take uh, use recycle their boxes that they have from food deliveries and use those for our cardboard weaves, and we can incorporate the um, the graphics that are on the boxes as part of our design, mm -hmm. or um, you know whatever's happening in the newspaper, we could embroider into that. There's or we could use it in the collage, or we can print on it with the mono, uh, the jelly plates. That that's the sort of sort of um, uh, uh, what we're talking about in terms of embracing place, just bringing it all together. Yeah, so are there questions? Joan. Hi. Hi. So um, regarding all the flora and fauna, by the way, everything sounded great. Um, but regarding the flora and fauna, are we allowed to take leaves and, you know, out of the country? I know in the airport, they usually give, give, give you a little question, are you transporting, you know, vegetation? Um, so how does that work? Well, technically, you're really not supposed to bring uh, fauna or rather flora into the Greek flora or foreign flora into the United States, technically. But basically, you're not bringing large amounts. So if whatever you may have as your art pieces, if you wrap them carefully and put them deep in your suitcase, <laughs> you won't have any problem. I think what they're worried about too is agricultural issues. Agricultural of, products. Right, of pests and diseases, right. Yeah. So, you know, if we're using this um, particular chemical to change the leaf, then we are sealing in whatever pests or, you know, diseases that leaf might carry. Um, but I do think it's worth thinking about um, what's your, what is your comfort level with that? And um, I'm not opposed to the idea of doing work while we're in Scopolos that's ephemeral, that actually is not, not creating an object that we have to hang on to and can't let go. So, you know, you might experiment with stuff with, with leaves that you just, um, it's just the experience of it and not necessarily creating an object. And just, um, and just to um, also, I, I found the word that I couldn't recall a few minutes ago <laughs> and it is glycerin. So it's not a chemical, it's vegetable mm -hmm. glycerin. It's very non-toxic. I will be bringing it. No one else has to worry about it. And um, it's a miracle. They use this a lot in skincare products. Mm -hmm. I, I personally don't think you'll have any problem bringing back whatever flora you may have within your art pieces. Um, we didn't last time. No, I, I doubt it. I mean, we once brought an entire enormous bag of uh, oregano <laughs> um, about the size of a pillow. And we we're basically checking for drugs and fresh fruit. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't think that's a problem. I don't think they would take it away or discover it. So I don't see it as a great issue. question, though. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anybody else have any questions? No. Sorry. Oh, oh, Susan, what are we going to write about? <laughs> well, um, I usually do prompts that um, are fairly open ended and um, are um, some, some of them will be most of them will be about your current experience. So I can I can give you an example when we're in Athens. 
um, I now I can't use it, but if I, but one of the prompts I might've used is, you know, after experiencing two days in Athens, if Athens was an animal, what animal would it be and why? Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a way of getting you to think in terms, sometimes to think in terms of metaphor, <laughs> sometimes it's a way of getting you to associ make associations between what you're seeing or experiencing and something about you as a person. Um, so there, but there, are, you know, there are a series of prompts and we will be making them, you know, we will be doing them as we go along. And if you have a good prompt, then you can be, you can give the prompt. I'm really a big believer in the wisdom in the room. So, um, I'm also open to hearing your ideas about prompts. I, you know, I don't believe, I believe stream of consciousness writing. I don't believe you should worry about spelling or crossing things out. I don't think you should worry about punctuation. Um, I do love it if we share. And so sometimes we'll share one on one because sometimes that's easier for people. And then other people love to have a whole group hear them. So we'll share in a big group. You know, we'll be sort of, you know, getting to know each other through the process of this um, very relaxed way of writing. I think that's, that's Joan. Really great. I love it. Okay. Oh, good. Hi again. Um, so I have a question uh, probably for Isabel and Tom. So if you, if one wanted to um, extend the time um, in Greece or maybe not extend, but uh, get there before the um, class actually begins, uh, would you be able to offer suggestions, guidance, or you know, recommendations? Of I can, when, what I do normally is I, I, and I would ask everyone to let me know if they intend to come several days early and they want to stay at the hotel where the group stays, just let me know. And I will include you within the group booking. Although what you would do is pay for the additional rooms directly to the hotel. Mm -hmm. I mean, the additional nights. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people like to come a day or two early just to, uh, recover a bit from jet lag before the program starts because you do feel jet lag. <laughs> it's really hard to avoid it. So if you want to do that, just let me know, but give me plenty of time because it's a very popular hotel. I mean, I've already booked rooms, our rooms just generally. Mm -hmm. So then I can for kind of, for September. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've booked a general amount of rooms just because I can always change that booking. But as for dates ahead of time or a day or two after that, I can help you out with that. Or if you want to travel to a different area of Greece, that's another story. Of course, I can't book anything for you. I won't do that, but uh, that's too much responsibility. But I could advise you. Oh, I also have an amazing um, travel agent based in oh. Sifnos who helped us last time. And it was spectacular. So I can, if you email me, I'll give you her contact information. And she was wonderful. Can't hear you, Joan. I'm sorry. You're okay. muted again, Joan. Again? Here. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Oh, on my screen. Oh, mute must mean... I pressed the button to mute. So now I am unmuted. Okay, I'm, I'm getting it. Okay, so this is a, a just a, a almost, a, well, uh, so the monetary unit that's in uh, Greece, uh, I, what's it called? And what is it like? Um, any idea what the um, uh, ratio or the, how it relates to the US dollar? Okay, um, the monetary rate, Greece is part of the European Union, so we use the euro. In Greek, you call it the euro. And uh, at this point, the exchange rate is really fantastic. I think- uh, It's almost par. Almost at a par. Mm -hmm. yeah, maybe like one euro is worth one dollar and one cent. Mm -hmm. At this point, you never know what's going to happen, but over the last year, mm -hmm. it's really leveled out. And of course, we're hoping it'll stay that way. Okay, thank you. 
And you can, you don't necessarily need to bring euros with you. You can just you bring your card and get euros at the airport when you arrive. Some people like to have some euros with them because you will need euros for a taxi to mm -hmm. ride to the hotel, but you can get that at the airport as well. They have ATM machines throughout the airport. Oh, and something else I'd like to mention is that once you sign up, Isabel and Tom send you this amazing packet with all kinds of practical information. You know, think like what we're just talking about. Also, what kind of clothing and any other things. And I also have a list that I made for myself after I went last time of certain things I want to remember for next time. And I'll share that with you as well. Yeah, I will be sending it out once I make it up because it's always changing a bit, but an orientation packet that includes everything Jody said, packing tips, what you need for travel, as far as travel documents, probably there won't be any COVID restrictions by that time at all. There aren't any now. Um, and, and just a sense of food, the types of food you can get, um, things like that. And then I send it, you give you another packet specifically for Scopolos to describe the beaches and the restaurants. And, uh, we, we give out a lot of information. So mm -hmm. terrific. read it. You'll, <laughs> you'll be really prepared. All right. Are there more comments or questions? It looked like in uh, how is the snorkeling was one question. Oh, yeah, that was Bill. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. snorkeling. Mm -hmm. It's well, I've never been to the Caribbean, but it's nothing like the Caribbean. But the water is crystal clear. I mean, crystal clear and so blue. And you can see fish, you see interesting rock forms. But it's, uh, I mean, I, I always snorkel and I never swim without a mask because I like to see what's under the water. And it's more interesting in different beaches. Okay. Well, I'll also add that the beaches tend to have like these great little shacks with drinks and snacks. Mm. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some beaches have full blown tavernas, like mm -hmm. Panama Beach is big, gorgeous, expansive beach. Must have like, oh, I don't know, 20 tavernas. You can take mm -hmm. your choice uh, to have lunch there. It's mm -hmm. People love just going on vacation there, you know, like going there for an art program gives you that extra really special, I mean, you get to express the whole experience, especially the way it seems that Jody and Meryl are going to um, be teaching. It embraces the environment in a really special way. Oh, and we're going to also visit a um, historic Scopal, Scopolos home. Yeah. And, and a goat farm to, for cheese if making. To, yeah. If we have time, we can schedule a visit to a goat farm where they make cheese. And you can buy local cheese. And you can even have it vacuum packed and bring it home. And, and there's all sorts of things like... Um, reading our coffee grounds, your friend does, has, like it's a fun thing. Uh, has started reading the future in the coffee grounds. This is a tradition I'll tell you about. And after I tell you about it during one of these presentations, we can arrange a time to go. And if you choose to, you can have your future read in your coffee grounds. <laughs> I love that. Very traditional thing that primarily women do. Mm -hmm. hmm. And she's good. And she's good. She's very good at it. So that was a lot of information. Do we have any more questions? Ooh. Yeah. So, uh, so has she told you things about your coffee grounds that have come true? <laughs> Last year, almost yes. everyone said, how could she have known that? Like, because she tells you, sometimes she tells you about your past mm -hmm. as well. And one, one student, she told one student, you're going to come, to, like what, when she does a coffee grinds, she says, this is for the next three weeks, not for the rest of your life. 
you know, so if you want to know what's happening next, you have to come back in three weeks and for several days and get another coffee reading. By the way, she doesn't charge for it. You just buy the coffee and she reads for free. Um, but uh, she told some student she was going to suddenly get a substantial amount of money coming to her. And of course, you know, it's very vague, but then she wrote an email to us saying the very day she arrived back at her home, there was a check from the IRS. It was <laughs> really fun. So she said, it was true, it was true. <laughs> I mean, she's also said things about people's past and their lives that have really surprised them. Like, how could mm -hmm. you have known that? And she, <clears throat> She's very sensitive. She's an anthropologist, actually, not a coffee reader, but she's professionally doing coffee reading now. I'm going to keep getting another coffee and another coffee until she says you're going to be very hyperactive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The nice thing is to have arranged this before you go out to dinner where there's live music and you can stay up late because you're all hyped up from the yeah. Greek coffee, <laughs> which is very strong. <laughs> oh, the Greek coffee is amazing. Mm. And the tomato salads. Was mm. that called daca or something? Oh my gosh. Dacos. It's a Cretan salad. Oh These rusks, wheat rusks that get soaked a little bit in olive oh. oil and they chop up a lot of tomatoes and the tomato juice runs down into the wheat rusks and then they top it with a lot of, depending, it could be feta cheese or some local cheese. Oh. Yeah, the salads are really good. Yeah. All right. So, um, oh, Opal? Uh, one more question. While you're talking about food, can, can it, would it be fairly, would it be not too difficult to um, uh, get gluten-free diet there? Gluten, they have in the supermarkets now, they have gluten-free everything these days. Um, and in the restaurant- in the restaurant, I could just ask to- You make... have to look at the menu and see right. what's gluten-free, but there's plenty of things that are gluten-free. Yeah. I mean, it's an island. There's a lot of fish, you yeah. know, and a lot of- I love fish, yeah. Vegetables. And fruits and vegetables, so that works. Yeah. yeah. They don't have gluten. Right. <laughs> when I last looked. <laughs> Glutini, glutini. Okay. <laughs> All right. So what I will do is I will save this recording and send it to you all if you're interested in receiving mm -hmm. it to have as a reference. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll also send it to some people who were not able to attend. And sign up is active. We have four people who've already signed up. We can accept up to eight. Is that right, Isabel? We can accept at least eight, and we have to discuss if we can take 10 or possibly 12. 12 is absolutely max. Okay. So and maybe um, 10 is max. We have to talk about it once I, we'll discuss it, but eight. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, Joan. Okay. I'm, I'm unmuted now. So um, did I miss the part about the cost of this uh, this uh, uh, sort of working vacation or was that covered somewhere else? Oh, it's, it's on that, the yeah. website. It's, mm -hmm. it's oh, on, it's on the... uh, which website? Island Center. Okay. Islandcenter.org. Okay. okay. And then there's a, a window, um, a menu item that talks about workshops and Merrill's in our mind are, is under there. Okay. It's under I the su it. yeah, summer. It's the called title of summer programs. Summer okay. program. Joan, if you've got my website, there's a, I mean, if you've got my newsletter, there's a, there's a link. Okay. In the, in the newsletter. No, I just saw about the Zoom okay. meeting and I didn't, that's sort of all I focused on. So. Oh yeah. Okay. No, I'll take a look. Yeah, there's so many variables to it. That's why it's best if you just look, you know, this, yeah. you know, whether okay, you have a single great. or a double. Or, center. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. And just do you have a sense of like how much extra beyond the costs that are listed you, one would pay for food and um, time? 
can like tell a, you that the, it used to, Greece used to be very, very cheap. Now, you know, they're just upping the prices because it's becoming more modern and chicer, actually. Mm -hmm. But I would say a dinner with wine, a typical dinner with wine will cost probably about 20 euros, 18 to 20 euros per person. But if you order a huge fish or it's certain foods, then it, it will be more expensive. But typically we spend anywhere between 18 and 20 on a dinner and you can get lunch for virtually nothing. You know, there's such delicious fast food you could pick up if you don't feel like making your own sandwiches. You know, there's fantastic spanakopitas and gyros and pizza. Um, Tomato salads. <laughs> salads, you can make your own salads. You can buy a salad. Uh, so that's about, if you figure, if you're just buying some groceries, making your own lunch, and then spending about 20 euros a day okay. on your dinner. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, yeah. I know we. I know some of us here have already signed up, and I hope to mm -hmm. that we get to meet more of you after you saw, if you're interested in coming. And I, again, um, feel free to contact Meryl and me at any time with any question. Yeah, and and, well. and the same with me and Tom. Like, contact us with any question you have. We're always happy to provide answers and happy to communicate. Okay. Uh, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. Nice to see everybody. Yeah. <laughs> okay.